This is Soulful Living on Empower Radio. Here's your host, Terry Williams. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wherever you are in the world today, sit back and enjoy another 30 minutes of Soulful Living here at EmpowerRadio.com. Today, we're going to talk about healing ancestral karma, you know, that baggage that we carry with us. And um, that baggage comes with us, not just from our parents, but from their parents and their parents' parents and so on and so on and so on. Just like the Wella Balsam commercial, right? And so on and so on and so on. It's an honor for me today to bring Dr. Stephen Farmer with us here to talk about healing that ancestral karma and his work through earth magic. Dr. Farmer is a psychotherapist. He is a shamanic practitioner and a soul healer. He's also a spiritual teacher and he's one of the teachers that I've been very blessed to be following for many years now. And with that said, I'm going to let Dr. Farmer share a little bit more about his experiences here on Earth. So welcome to Soulful Living, Dr. Farmer. Uh, thank you, Terry. Thanks for having me back again. I'm, I'm really looking forward to talking about this book and whatever other topics we get into. Well, you know, let's jump right in. Um, what is your idea of ancestral karma? Yeah, well, karma is, yeah, there's, you hear different definitions, what the meaning is of karma, depending upon who you talk to and what you read. But in this, in this phrase, ancestral karma, healing ancestral karma, there's a couple of implications. One, it has to do with our ancestors, of course. And then mm -hmm. second is karma, something that tracks us, if you will, through, uh, through the generations. So healing ancestral karma, when you put that together, means that 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 stuff that's handed to you through your genetics uh, that um, and through the environmental influences on those genetics as well of not only yourself, but certainly of your ancestors related to that is, is uh, I'm out to change the world, Terry, <laughs> at least, uh, Me too. At, least at, at least to change uh, what that term really means. We typically think of our um, parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents, etc. Once they have died and moved on, we tend to think of them in our culture as deceased loved ones, which is absolutely valid. You know, it's not either or. However, what I also want us to start thinking of them as uh, I want uh, I want to encourage people to think of them as ancestors too. We're um, somewhat of a, an anomaly as far as cultures go in, in their relationship to ancestors. Every culture, well, I don't say every culture, I, I've not studied every single culture on the planet, but I, I realize that indigenous cultures and even contemporary cultures, many contemporary cultures have some place for their ancestors, the ones we call deceased loved ones, and also that in some instances, um, and particularly in indigenous communities, people that have lived on the land for centuries, uh, they see their lineage going back a long, 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 long ways past grandparents, great-grandparents, etc. Like Hawaiians, they, they, through, through song and stories, they will detail the lineage um, through their songs that goes back um, centuries. So my point being is that you know, we, we, we've lost that, that connection to ancestors and a way of thinking about the ancestors. And frankly, they're, they're knocking at the door. The old ones, as well as the more recent ancestors, uh, are knocking at the door. They want to help us. They want to be incorporated into our spiritual practices more and more. In New Zealand, where I was recently, the Maori culture, uh, my friend Darlene noted that we do not begin any ceremony. Well, we begin every ceremony first by calling in the ancestors. Mm -hmm. So that's that's part of my mission here with the, the workshops and and uh, the book itself, Healing Ancestral Karma. Well, there's two things I really want to say. Um, uh, first of all, personally, I start my day by thanking the ancestors and the elders Great. and everybody else Great. that got me to this point. I think it's Good. really important, and I think you're absolutely right, that our culture has kind of um, 
not kind of. I mean, they've let go of that. They've put that on the back seat and they don't, they may think of them and celebrate their, the anniversaries of their deaths or their, you know, their birthdays yeah. while they were here and that kind of thing. But we've kind of gotten away from honoring their um, place in our everyday lives. And, but why do you think that is? I think that we've, uh, first off, in, in indigenous cultures where the people have lived on the land for, a, let's say, a number of generations, um, often what we find is that the ancestors uh, are alive in the land. Uh, the two cultures, indigenous cultures I'm, I'm most familiar with are the Hawaiian and the Aboriginal culture in Australia. And the uh, connection to the land is, uh, is so strong there in the old Hawaiian spiritual practices, for instance. It's so strong there. For instance, when you die, um, the story of when you die and what happens after you die goes something like this, is that when you die, your soul transports, it gets transported to a land called Po, which uh, is the underworld. And by the underworld, it doesn't mean hell. It, it's just a, another way of looking at the land called Po. And there you hang out with the big gods and goddesses. The, uh, they're called that, as a group, they're called the Akua, A-K-U-A, the Akua. And after um, certain soul lessons and acquiring a certain amount of mana or power, you emerge as an ancestral spirit in the land, typically connected to your lineage via a specific flower or a specific animal or a specific part of the land in some way or all the above. Um, you may have in your lineage your um, Ancestral spirit is an owl. Mm -hmm. and, and what's hard for us to get around, our, our minds around, is that it's not, it's not that the owl is a um, representative of the ancestors. It is the ancestors. Mm -hmm. It's an expression. And what is the uh, uh, spirit animal that is connected and is in physical form that is of that ancestral lineage is called amakua. So the word akua is in there related to, it roughly means related to the gods. Mm. And I mean gods and goddesses, of course, but related mm -hmm. to the gods. So uh, it, the richness of that, that connection to the land is something that we don't have here. I've, I've, done, I've taught this class on healing ancestral karma several times now. And uh, I ask, how many have you uh, in, the, in the audience have a um, live on the same land that your grandparents lived on, mm -hmm. and uh, virtually no one raises their hand. So we have this um, dissociation from the intimacy with the land, and in turn with the earth. A lot of our our what we've uh, um, been uh, indoctrinated with, and that's a good word, over centuries has been to uh, just sort of endure this life on earth, you know, do your best and endure the suffering, et cetera, on earth. And then uh, you'll, you'll, when you die, you'll go into the heavenly realm where it's paradise of some sort. Well, think about it. If you think about that, that really says that you, you, you don't want to be here really, but you got to endure it until right. you die. And then, and then you have all sorts of good things happening um, in, in the heavenly realm, something like that, that sort of mythos or, or mythology. Uh, what I, I, I hearken to a story that a friend of mine told, a dear friend of mine, Gretchen McKay, who's a shamanic colleague. Uh, Gretchen has a fascinating story in that she's uh, Caucasian. She's Irish, uh, basically Irish-Scottish is her ethnicity and her biological ancestry. But she was drawn to work with this African fella who visited here in, uh, from Western Africa, the Zulus, uh, named P.H., uh, Petros something or other. I can't say his name. It's it's hard to pronounce. About five different names, but we call her Ph, who is now in spirit world and an ancestor as well. But she began to study with Ph, and one of the first sessions she had with Ph, that was his question or his statement is he said, "You've lost your ancestors." Mm -hmm. 
you know, and he said that with some sadness, like there's something like something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong here. You've lost mm-hmm. your ancestors. So she went on uh, just to finish the story with Gretchen. She went on to study with him and actually went to Africa a couple of times. And the second time she went, she was initiated as a Sangoma, uh, which is an African uh, shaman. Mm-hmm. And um, he, she is now, by her initiation, connected to that whole lineage of PHs. Anyway, that's a sort of a coda to the story, but the point is, Ph saying, you know, you've lost your ancestors. That's so right. That's so well, true. So, you know, I'm on a mission to bring them back. You know, bring them back into consciousness. And do you think that, in large part, it has to do with the, um, you know, kind of like the Heinz 57 variety? You know, here we are in the Western United States, and it's become so multicultural and so diverse that people um, are becoming um, not self-absorbed, but uh, they're first of all they've they have lost touch with their ancestors and they've lost touch uh, with their own heritage because there's so many other things happening within society that they're not paying attention to their own culture. I think that's a very thoughtful, uh, very thoughtful question. I think I agree with you, and I think in a sense we are we tend to be self-absorbed. <laughs> you know we. We, mm-hmm. we tend to be, uh, I, I live in uh, Southern California, as you know, and, and uh, you know, I grouse about this from time to time. It's just, it's a little crazy here. You know, you get on yeah. the freeways and everybody's rushing here and rushing there. And I, you know, and I fall into that trap too. I'm a, I'm a human being, you know, I fall into right. that trap too. Of, of I got to get there, you know, and, and the competitiveness and just, it's not, it's not uh, exclusive to Southern California. I understand that. It's maybe large urban areas. It, it might be a little bit more... Uh, uh, predominant. But anyway, I, uh, as to your question, yes, it's not just that. It's that also um, I, I've made a, a, a distinction or a, a way of looking at ancestors in a, a different way. Uh, and that is that I see it that there's really three types of ancestors and there can be overlap amongst these three types, but they are basically biological ancestors, territorial mm-hmm. and spiritual ancestors. Uh, going back to number one, biological is the one we typically think of, is that we have some genetic DNA connection to those who have come before. And that's mm-hmm. that's largely what we think of when we think of our ancestors, is that uh, I can think of my grandpa, uh, Grandpa Mac, and uh, he has come to me, as well as my own father, uh, Richard, has come to me on a few occasions. And they're, they're my biological ancestors. Sonny Don Johnston, who is a, a medium, a uh, dear friend of mine, also mm-hmm. said that uh, you are a medium to your most immediate ancestors, your biological ancestors. And I think that's true. That really makes mm-hmm. sense to me is, is more frequently I've come in touch with my biological ancestors, uh, the ones who have come before that have died are going through their afterlife process. The, the um, territorial ancestors is one I think that can help us reconnect to the land, wherever we live, wherever we are. And that is uh, when I walk out in my backyard here in Cana Point, California, there are moments when I uh, either call on or I feel the presence of the, what I'm calling the territorial ancestors. And these are the ancestors that, that are, you could say, guardians of the land that uh, will, will help us uh, with blessings of the land that we live on. And to start thinking of not just the earth, but the land and the connection to the ancestors of the land, I think, is one that can be very valuable for wherever you happen to live. You live in an apartment, there's still land there. You live in a condo, there's still land there. You live in a a house that's on 40 acres, you know, there's definitely land there. The third, uh, Terry, the, the third one is spiritual ancestors. I find that interesting. Gretchen's a good example. Her spiritual ancestry is is very strongly connected to PH and his lineage, even though there's no uh, you know Irish Scotch versus uh, African <laughs> West African, right. uh, you know there's no obvious connection uh, in terms of the lineage, and yet she is very much a part of that lineage there now, and I would deem that as a spiritual ancestry. So it it broadens the scope of what we mean by ancestors. And also allows us uh, to to call on the ancestors in a more, shall we say, a more general way than just our biological ancestors. 
Well, as someone who uh, believes that we are connected to everything, um, whether it's, uh, you know, past generations or future generations, I couldn't agree more that our ancestors are everything um, and that we can connect to them and and learn how to heal, yeah. not only ourselves, but he learn how to heal our land, you know, yeah. learn how to heal our children and help yeah. them yeah. Um, create different patterns and belief systems. If you, you know, for lack of a better word, words right now, but to help them to, you know, create a better future for themselves. And so how yeah. are some of the ways that we can go about healing that and releasing some of the baggage or the perceived baggage that we bring with it because it's not, it doesn't all feel good. No, no. And that's, you know, really the point of, of uh, the, uh, the book is healing ancestral karma and how do yes. we go about doing that? I first generally, whatever healing processes we involve ourselves in or we're drawn to or attracted to, this is the, this is, this is really the, uh, the crux of it, if you will, is that whatever we do to heal, and we have so many resources to do the healing, and I'm using that term in a, a very broad sense, whatever we do to heal, not only goes forward to our descendants, our children, children's children, grandchildren, etc., but it goes backwards to our ancestors. This is one of the most fascinating um, things that I've discovered over the, the years that I've been working with this. Yes, okay, yes. wait, I just have to say that gave me chills from head to toe. Good. That means that uh, you can go forward and backward. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah, it's, wow. You get it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, your body went, whoa, whoa, what's yeah, talking about here? Absolutely. You, know, you know that your, your subconscious got alerted to that, you know, through your body. As they say, when you get chills, you're either having a, you're either sick or having a spiritual experience. And I, I you know, I, I'm getting chills now too, as we talk about this. So the ancestors are here and present for both of us. Yeah. Absolutely. Going backwards. Okay. That uh, Hollis Duran, another friend of mine is a medium. That's what she, she made that comment. That's so true. I get it is when we do the healing, it moves forward and backward. See what happens now. And you, you talk to different people, you'll get different versions of what happens after we die. But I think we're getting more and more interested in, yeah, what does happen? You know, what does happen? You know, this idea of of going to this heavenly realm. Okay, that works for some people. That's cool. I, yeah, I'm okay with that. I don't want to argue and, and try to make a religion out of what I've been shown about the afterlife. But what I, I basically have been shown is that we don't, we don't, when we die, we're not done. You know, it has a certain intuitive logic to it, if you will. Um, when we, uh, we have things to maybe clean up, uh, uh, wounds, uh, addictions, et cetera, uh, that we need to clean up as we move through the various phases of our soul's process through the afterlife. So we don't immediately ascend. We don't immediately become a saint. You know, we, we have some work to do. Now, given that, there might be exceptions. You know, maybe people do get, you know, are done, <laughs> you know, and are real clean and pure. But Terry, so far in my time on the earth, I've not met anybody like that. I've met gurus that are like in, in that sort of, uh, you know, how would we say, that state of um, attunement much of the time, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. they're also human beings. So anyway, I, I could go on and on about that. But basically, my, my point is that we, we have work to do. Uh, my father, for instance, who died about 15 years ago, he's come to me. Directly, again, like Sonny John Johnson has said uh, in her book, Love Never Ends, is that when we're, when we're, um, um, we, we are a medium to our most immediate ancestors, those biological ancestors that have gone before. So it's not unusual. I'm sure that if, if we could take a poll of everybody who's listening to this program and say, how many of you have had direct contact with <laughs> your mother or father who have passed on or your grandparents? I bet you probably 90% of the people would raise their hands. Mm -hmm. It'd be interesting to see what kind of comments you might get about that particular statement. Anyway, so, um, you know, my father has come to me on, on more than one occasion. My mother has come to me. Uh, basically, she's come to me twice in two very, very powerful um, interactions of, uh, where it's been complete forgiveness for, from me to her and her to me. 
you know, she came one time to apologize, mm. <laughs> to make it's amends. It's beautiful. It, oh, it, was, it, it makes me uh, almost want to cry right now as I recall that memory. And uh, I'll tell you the story very briefly is that my mother, uh, and I feel very, uh, I don't know, I feel very warm and compassionate for her, whereas many years it was like, okay, I got to work on my mother issues. <laughs> you know, right. Get my anger out, you know, get my hurt out and all that stuff. And all that's been helpful because whatever we do to heal, whatever we do can affect both ways, you know, front and back. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, she came to me at this one point. And uh, she married my father and had three children when she married him. She came to me at one point and said, you know, Stephen, oh, she called me Steve, because that's how I was known when I was younger, Steve, without the N. She says, Steve, you know, I got to tell you, I'm sorry. Your father was a good man. He was a hard worker, which is really true. He was a hard worker. And I had three kids to take care of. I was a single mom. (laughs) you know, during the, during the forties and, uh, not a real, you know, popular thing to be mm-hmm. in uh, that era, but I, I loved him. I did. Don't get me wrong. I loved him, but I also saw that he was a great provider. The only thing is he wanted to have another child and I already had three. <laughs> and so uh, reluctantly I gave into that and I've always had this kind of ambivalence towards you, even though I loved you. It's like, I, I had some resentment too. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm really sorry for that. You know, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And wow, talk about, you know, uh, sobbing and, <laughs> you know, laying on the floor and sobbing with this, this incredible relief and this deep understanding and compassion for my mother that, you know, knowing too that she, as she explained, she was wounded, you know, quite a bit too. She was beaten mm-hmm. quite a bit by her uh, Irish uh, <laughs> parents. And uh, I guess a fairly mean uh, mother, uh, and it, it just was a gush of this this incredible compassion, heart opening compassion for her when she came to me. Anyway, that's a, that's it, well, a and it was story. healing for you. So you became oh, a compassionate absolutely. witness to her pain and suffering, and yeah. were able to heal that piece of you that yep. may have felt um, right. your yeah. own internal pain from from that that yeah. carried over into your life. A very good summary. Yeah. And I, you know, it, it, it peeled away what felt and feel, felt and feels like this final layer of, of clearing things with any way that I might have carried or thought of or felt about or was conditioned or habituated to uh, believing and acting in a way with my mother that then of course transferred to my adult relationships with, with women. And uh, there was always this part of me in the past that was like, I got to be a good boy for mommy and, and I could go and like at 13 years old, go out in the garage and smoke a cigarette. You know, even though I didn't smoke a lot of cigarettes, it just, wow, you know, act a, yeah, I can be a bad boy here, you know? Oh yes, mommy. I'm okay. I'm a good boy. Just this real incredible, uh, almost schizophrenic split, even though it's not a uh, psychosis. It was this, uh, this way of trying to portray myself as a good boy. But you know, it was really, it was a, it, it really cleared something incredibly deep. To have that experience. My point being is this is this is a great example, and there are many others I've heard of over the years of how the ancestors can help us heal, and, and we can think of them not just as mom or dad or grandpa or grandma, but as ancestors. The 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 uncle that comes to you and and apologizes and make amends for, um, you know, put it bluntly, for sexually abusing you. And even though you may not find that in your heart of forgiveness, which, by the way, it's not just a mantra, I forgive you. It's that, as I described that experience for me, it's like the word itself is not even in the vocabulary at that particular point. It's just your heart opens to someone, you know, an ancestor, when there is that healing done, like, oh, even though Uncle Uncle Fred, uh, you may not want to hang around with him, <laughs> You can still move through that process of forgiveness when you understand your ancestors' wounds, and they and heal also, the and heal the yep. generations. You're, you know, yep. here, past, yep. present, and future. Well, Doctor Farmer, time goes by so much faster than we think, right? Yep. Oh, <laughs> as yeah. we think as humans, and we're down to the wire here. Um, Listeners, I've been chatting with Dr. Stephen Farmer. I encourage you to visit his website. All of his information is available on the 
Soulful Living page here at EmpowerRadio.com and grab his book, Healing Ancestral Karma, to free yourself and to become that, if nothing else, to give yourself some compassion and be free from what you've been carrying. Dr. Farmer, I love for my guests to leave the listeners with a thought that they can carry out into the day. And maybe we need to make this a thought that we can carry on to our next show because I need to have you back. We need okay, to share more of this good. conversation. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'm not sure I can say anything profound or that will um, in, be that impactful. Uh, I keep thinking, here's the words I keep thinking of lately. I just was in a group, yes, a men's group in love. Gratitude and compassion, love, gratitude, and compassion. If you could take those three words and post them right by your computer or in your car, just as reminders that if you fall off the wagon, if you fall off the horse, more accurately, get back on the horse, of course, find that place where you can feel gratitude, find some uh, being that you can feel compassion for, that tree in your backyard, that little animal, the person across the street, whoever it may be. Just to, to understand that we're all human beings, just do the best we can trying to figure out this process called life. Boy, you got it. Thank you. 